Hey, Mike, we get this question all the time. What do you think about copyright, dude? I mean, copyright is a plague on my existence as a creator. You know, I'm <laughs> sure that it's like that for a lot of reactors, um, a lot of YouTubers in general, but definitely reactors, you know, and it's it's a necessary evil. We've talked about this before, yeah. you know, these these labels, these musicians, they have to protect their content. But I think that even if your content is you know, covered by fair use, it's still, it, it's, they, some labels just deny you. They just deny you without even reading your claim or anything. And, uh, you know, we've talked about that. It's, it just feels like it's an automated process sometimes. It absolutely is. And like, listen, we've battled through copyright. I mean, we both have channels with over a hundred thousand subscribers. So we're not just saying this because we've watched some videos. We live this every day with our channels. And I'm hoping that our dialogue here talking about copyright is going to help you and future creators kind of navigate through this until there's a better solution out there. Because guys, we just have to work with what we've got. There, there's no like end all be all solution to this. You know, there's steps that you can take to mitigate. You know, I've uploaded at around 800 videos now. These are all things that we've learned from lived experience, but it's still a learning experience day by day for us even. So, I mean, I, I upload our videos that we are going to react to for the week. I go ahead and download the video, upload it to YouTube. I check to see what copyright, if it's an audio copyright, whether it's a video copyright, the video copyrights you can get around. You can make your video opaque, um, but the audio copyrights, it all depends on the label. You can do everything in your power to stay within fair use. And some labels just do not care. There's nothing you're going to be able to do other than what I've done. And we, we do have a discord to where we if you're an, if you're a fellow reactor, feel free to join it. We've got a channel in there that has all the labels that we've had the most problems with listed. And you can just avoid those labels. You know, you can see what labels copyright claimed your video. And you could just decide to skip it if you want to. That's all up to you. Yeah, no, it's 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 so true too. like avoiding labels. And I think I think the biggest thing here is you can't really without altering your video to death to the point where it's unpleasant for the viewer. There's no way that you're going to be able to just avoid getting a copyright claim on your video. If you're using copyrighted material, they're going to find you no matter how much you cut out, no matter how much you opaque it. There's ways that they have, you know, internally with the content ID system that they're they're going to find it. So I think the best advice I can give to any new creator, any new reactor is make sure that you are following the step, the fair use guidelines with transforming your work, making sure that does not take away from the commercial value and really making it into a different medium than what the original content is. If it's a music video, you're clearly not making a music video. You've transformed that piece of content into a reaction video. Fight the, the dispute. Basically get into the dispute and make sure that in all confidence, you can go in and fight that dispute and win that dispute. That's something you really need to make sure you have on block. Because even with us, we've we've gotten our disputes rejected. Because again, I think that's all automated. I don't think a, a real human is actually looking over our copyright claim dispute. But you have to take it to the next step, and that's to appeal, which could lead into a copyright strike. And we've both dealt with that. And as long yeah. as you are confident that you are following the fair use guidelines, um, I've won a few copyright battles, you know, by yeah, filing those appeals. I've even went as far as filing a counter notification to get the strike removed. And I have won those. I don't do it with certain people like Sony or Fremantle that covers AGT. And, yep. and that's the thing too, you know, they have the copyright claim system, but some will even go back and manually claim your videos that even if they fall under fair use, these people are, I mean, it's the, the system is what it is. YouTube is yeah. kind of hands off with this. So we have to learn to follow the guidelines that are there um, and kind of understand that YouTube's hand off, hands off it's all on you. Okay. It's all on yep. you. If you want to avoid copyrights altogether, it's never going to happen. They can still go back and manually claim you, but you can mitigate it a bit. 
but you know, a lot of our AGT America's got talent reactions had no copyrights. A few months later, they're manually claimed. They will deny all of your, you know, disputes, everything like that. And so it's, it's all, it's all up to you at that point. Do you want to take it a step further? If you dispute the claim and they deny it, you can file an appeal. If they deny your appeal, sometimes it ends up in a strike. You can file a counter notification. And if you, if they decide to keep the strike on, they have to sue you. They literally have to take you to court. And I've never had anybody take it that far. There's been one case of a reactor being taken to court and that's H3H3. H3. They're in a different ball, ballpark than us, but they did win their suit. And so I think that there's a good chance that you can win your counter notifications. But the bottom line, like Steven said, is that you have to be making sure that you're falling within the fair use guidelines. Yes. And what well, my point to that is most times when I've gotten to that appeal, because you have seven days within the appeal process, most times, and I'm not saying all the time, but most times they'll drop the appeal and, yeah. uh, or they'll just let time out. They'll get to eight days and they're done and your video will be monetizable. Um, for me, I've had a couple where the, they rejected the appeal and they'll give you, sometimes they'll give you two options. The first option is they'll allow you to cancel your appeal and then the video will go back to the normal state, which in some cases is sharing revenue with the artist or the content copyright holder, which that's fine. You get screwed as, as the creator of that video, but yeah. the, it's not all lost. You'll get some monetary value out of that, but it also supports the original artist. So that's fine. And there's a debate whether it actually goes to the original artist or not. However, the, the second one is you could delete your video, which does anyone want to put hours and hours worth of time and then just delete their video, right? When you create this dispute message, you need to make sure you're answering those four points that are given to you by YouTube and make sure you can answer it to the best of your ability. And it, ours reads like a lawyer wrote it. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So yeah. And <laughs> One of the points is how much of the original content did you use? This is one that I've struggled with. Um, yep. We listen to ours in segments. So that's kind of my reasoning is that we break it up. We do watch the entire music video, but we break it up into segments. And so, yeah, like he said, you need to be very cognizant of how you're writing this. Make it sound very professional and you have to be confident as you're recording you need to nail down what your process of recording your reactions look lo looks like and stick to it. Um, some reactors, they don't pause at all. Some people have different levels of commentary they add. If you're a vocal coach, pausing all the time and breaking down the vocal technique. My wife and I, Jess, uh, on Regeneration Nation TV, our style is more talking about the lyrics, how they you know resonate with us personally. So whatever your style is, you need to find that style, stick to it and be confident that you're following the fair use guidelines. And when you go to the appeal process, the dispute, the appeal process, the counter notification process, you need to be as confident as possible that you followed all of the steps before you're filing these things. Um, and even though you file those and you're very confident, there are some labels that will deny you every single time from here to the end of time. And like I said, we have, we have a discord. You can join that. You can check out some of these labels that we've marked down. It's a discord for reactors to kind of help each other out and learn from each other and grow together because this is, that's all you can really do. You can just learn as you go and, and grow with the people around you. That's absolutely right. So here's my uh, dispute letter. I'm going to say what I, I'm going to give you guys an example of one. This is not something you should copy and paste because it's not might not be applicable to you this is not something that i'm i encourage you to just rip off from me right yeah what works for me is not going to work for you and vice versa but i do want you to take note of kind of the things that i'm addressing and find your own way right like answer those questions do it in a in a sense that you can so this video and all the reaction videos on the steven and taylor youtube channel fall under the protection of fair use allowances of criticism commentary, the video being claimed uses pu publicly available art, freely accessible 
on the video hosting platform YouTube. Um, this video and all the reaction videos on the Stephen and, Stephen and Taylor YouTube channel transformed the original content material into its own art, transforming it completely into a different type of medium. Like I said, we're not musicians. When we do a music reaction, I am not imitating them. I am not, I am just reacting to it. So I took a music video and made it into an, a reaction video. The, you can't mistake in the two, right? It's it's completely different medium. You know, and that's basically what I continue to say here is the video has been transformed into a Steven and Taylor reaction, deeming the original content unrecognizable because it is not, uh, I'm just going to say like ACDC music video. That's not what this is anymore. This video is not a replacement for the original content our copyrighted material as the reactors of this channel are not musicians recreating, composing or imitating the original comp copyrighted work. The nature of the copyrighted work is to provide a creative expression, criticism, commentary, and create a reaction video to promote the original artist. That's all you need to say. Um, the claimed video is not a suitable replacement for the original co copyrighted material and is not taking away commercial value from the original copyrighted material. Um, the commercial value is, the way I like to explain this, is there is 1.3 million videos being uploaded to YouTube on a daily basis. When we create reaction videos, we're giving life back to the, so that's how we're adding to that commercial value to these, these the original artists. We're breathing life into a video. Let's say someone watches our reaction video and we posted a pin comment or a link to the original video. Even if a hundred people checked out that link to see the original post, that's a hundred more views that they would have never have had because they're in the, the void of YouTube, right? So reactors add value to the original artist because a, a video five years ago is dead. The, sh the lifespan of videos on YouTube are, is it's not that long. Even trending ones don't live that long. So reaction channels give life. They bring attention back. To it. We have our own way of hitting the YouTube homepage, the SEO and the analytics about all that. And so we're able to bring a dead old video and bring it back to life. And that's something to any artist as well. It's not just old videos, new videos as well. So Mike, that's all about copyright. Um, is there anything that you would want to give advice to someone who just started a reaction channel? What would you say to them? I would say, um, you know, it's fine to want to change, promote change with the system, but don't get too caught up and stressed out over that. I've seen channels make that mistake. They get very vindictive towards YouTube, towards yeah. the labels. I'm a very, you know, I'm a person that takes a lot of self accountability. I worry about the things that I can worry about and I try to navigate life within those boundaries. And so do what you can as you go, you will learn, um, find friends in this game that you can learn quicker from, you know, you can take your learned experience, you can take their experience and combine it. And you, you know, you speed that process up a lot. Finding friends in this game for me helped me out tremendously. I feel like I've been able to learn about this stuff a lot faster than I would have been able to on my own, meeting people like Steven, having these conversations. Um, and so, yeah, you don't get vindictive. The, the, the terms do need to change, no doubt. The system that YouTube has in place is flawed. We all know this. The labels, certain ones, take advantage of YouTube taking a hands-off approach. But if you get so caught up and consumed by that, it's going to affect your content. So just don't do that. Learn from what you can from this, take away what you can from this video and your own personal experience, grow from it. And you know, there's, there is a way to navigate this and limit your copyrights. When we first started, we were almost getting almost every video copyrighted. As the, at the past couple of months from the things that I've kind of implemented, we have far less copyrights on the channel and we've had to stop reacting to certain artists, to certain labels. And that's unfortunate, but there's a bazillion artists. There's a bazillion labels out there that are okay with copyright. They're all okay with fair use. They respect it. And, you know, that's all you can really do.
That's all you can really do. Definitely fight for your right for fair use because they they don't care that you're fair use or no. not because there's no incentive for them not to make money off of your video. I think that there's an entire separate video that we should make talking about the ways that we can help promote change. But yeah, yeah th this video is more to educate on how you can, you know, navigate the current system in its current state. And it's uh, it's very flawed. But but yeah, there th that's about all the tips that we have for you guys today. Hopefully you learned from this. Like we said, we have a discord for fellow reactors. Definitely consider joining it. I think that uh, it could definitely give you a bit more help than we have given you in this video. Yeah. So. And and make sure we'll have that all linked down in the description. Yeah. Um, that way you could reach out to me and Mike personally. And we can help you. But yeah. all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like more of this, please leave down in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos of just me and Mike talking about YouTube and trying to help other creators be successful in this reaction game. Um, that's our time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Peace. Bye.